Good morning, Roy. And thank you for being with me today for the Voices of uh, Voices for Tibet. Um, hello, everyone. My name is Karma Tensum, and uh, I'm really happy that Roy is with us. Roy is a really old friend. He's been with, um, I've known Roy, I don't know, Roy for about 40 years. He's been with TCF from the very get-go. Um, I know, Roy, generally you don't like to talk much about yourself, but uh, for uh, you know, for our audience uh, with the Voices for Tibet, can you begin by telling a little bit about yourself? Well, Tashi Dilek Karma, it's nice to see you again as always. Um, I'm happy to say a few words. Um, I uh, have been uh, a Montanan for over 40 years, but prior to that, I was from the East Coast. And uh, I'm an attorney, uh, mostly retired now and have been honored to be part of TCEF since, I guess it's fair to say, pretty much the beginning. Right, right, right. But Roy, um, so I think I know that, you know, I think we met through Auntie VJ, but uh, um, can you let us know a little bit, how did you first come in connection with the Tibetans? What was it that sort of, um, uh, wanted, what, what was it that wanted you to help Tibetans because you have been doing it for a long time. So in other words, how did your association with the Tibetans begin? Well, it's interesting. My interest in Tibet came from my interest in mountains, which is what drew me from the East Coast to the West in the first place. I wanted to climb mountains. And so as a mountaineer, I was interested in mountain peoples and their stories. So I had read about Tibet and His Holiness the Dalai Lama and so forth for some years um, before making my first actual climbing trek to Nepal in 1983. And at that time, I no doubt met quite a number of Tibetans. But at the time, I was so ignorant, I didn't know the difference between a Tibetan and a Sherpa. Oh, so, um, and I'm fairly sure that my money changing lady in Kathmandu was probably Tibetan, but I didn't know it. So to be honest, my very first acquaintance with an actual Tibetan was you. Okay. When, when uh, several years later, you came to visit in Helena and Auntie Vijay introduced us as, and you were, you were a, a mere young Tibetan, uh, former Kampa. Now I, I it's fair to say you weren't a Kampa. Uh, past the age of two, when <laughs> your parents uh, had to flee from calm and uh, it, after the Chinese invasion. But so hearing that story and meeting you is what uh, actually engaged my personal interest in the Tibetan story, even though I'd been following the history for some time. All right. Thank you so much for those kind words. And you know, Roy, I always feel really blessed that through you, through VJ, through the late India Supra, I've been privileged to know so many TCF supporters. Um, but even among those, there are very few who have actually been to Tibet. You have to remember, I left Tibet when I was only two years old. So I'm really um, interested to know about your visit to Tibet. How was that like? Well, if it's interesting that you raise that because as, if you may recall, uh, my wife at the time and I were in India for an extended period of time in Nepal. And um, we had planned with you and with your friend Setanam Gal, your school friend yeah, from, yeah. Uh, from India to all travel to Tibet together in the spring of 1987. But right. uh, that didn't come to pass for a number of reasons, unfortunately. Um, my recollection is that there were disturbances on the Tibetan border between India and China. And so you and, and uh, Tetan elected for your own safety not to try and get into Tibet. At the time, it was fairly open to Westerners. And so my, uh, my former wife and myself and Vijay all managed to get there together in the spring of 1987. Before that time, I had been privileged to spend some time with you and your family um, in exile, in your exile home in Clement Town, and got to know your mother and grandmother, who right. your, your father carried over the Himalayas to safety in <laughs> India. What's such a story? And I was blessed to hear your story 
through the, through from your mother translated by you and I took hours of notes fascinated by your mother's stories of what it was like to be a, the, the daughter of a tribal chieftain in Kham. So it was after that then with the uh, enlightenment, if you will, of, of her stories that I got to visit Tibet for a month in May of 87 and meet many Tibetans at that point and see the countryside and just be completely filled up with the magic of the place and the people and the spirituality. Wow, wow. So Roy, that was the late 80s, right? It was the late 80s. And then um, we're moving forward to about 1995 when our little foundation, the Tibetan Children was founded in 1995 and we are celebrating 25 years this year. Um, and Roy, unfortunately, several of our founding members are no more with us. Uh, you and VJ are the last ones that I have. And I really wanted to ask you for whatever you remember about the founding of TCF. How do you think that came about? <laughs> well, it's really kind of a simple story because I think um, through VJ, I met, became acquainted with uh, India Supra and the Feathered Pipe Ranch, of course. Um, and, and also with you. And then it was another visit to your family in Clementtown, I believe it was in 1994, that we were all sitting around in the sunshine and uh, discussing the fact that for some time, the Feathered Pipe Ranch had been encouraging um, uh, its uh, friends to, to help support students at Clementtown School, uh, all of whom were Tibetan refugees and all of whom needed the help. And they'd been doing that out of, just out of the kindness of their hearts, just like so many people are doing now today. But the lawyer in me said, hey, they should be getting tax deductions for this in the United <laughs> States. That's and the way to do that is to create a nonprofit. Wow. And so I think you and I chatted about it. And I said, I'll bring it up to India Supra and see what she says. And of course, she was delighted. And of course, she took the bull by the horns. And next thing you know, she had me drafting the paperwork to create the Tibetan Children's Education Foundation 25 years ago. And wow. to my delight, we're still here today. Right. And that's, you know, the next thing I wanted to talk about is, you know, um, I know that um, initially it was really like a hobby, a hobby of compassion. But nevertheless, for India, yourself, Bill, um, Vijay, Diana. Uh, I suspect it was founded as a hobby of love, but here we are celebrating our 25th anniversary coming up in less than a week. So Roy, as you look back over these past 25 years, what are some of the things that you are really proud that our foundation has been able to do? Well, I'm actually proud of virtually everything it's done. And I can say that with complete humility because my role has primarily just been a legal advisor and board member. I was the initial executive director when my primary job was figuring out how to stick money into someone's shoe and get it to Clementtown. But <laughs> uh, fortunately, we've gotten past that now. But I'm so proud of all the projects that so many other people have initiated and carried through the relief efforts, the computer projects, the language projects. Um, and of course, the constant support of many, 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 many students, quite a few of whom have now graduated and gone on to become leaders um, in India uh, and, and elsewhere for the Tibetan cause. So I'm just tickled at the whole thing and I'm so pleased about all the people who've been with us all this time. Roy, I think you're downplaying your role just a little bit because <laughs> I remember one of my actually fondest and clearest memories of you, know, you is coming to your beautiful place in Idaho. I remember a time that I came with that um, really wonderful butter sculpture monk. Do you remember Lama Peljor, Gansang and myself? We invaded your cabin in the Teton and we tried to do that. Um, even was it in Jackson, Wyoming, uh, we ran into a snowstorm. Uh, so you have been an event um, coordinator for us in places like Idaho, Wyoming. And I know that that has not been easy. Um, so for someone trying to garner support for Tibet in places like Montana, especially Wyoming, Idaho, 
Um, can you tell me what some of the challenges are in such places? I don't know that the challenges are that much different than anywhere, really. Um, mm -hmm. I'm not a skilled fundraiser or that much experienced at it, for that matter. Um, so others could probably speak to the, to the generic challenges better than I. But my personal experience, for example, with Jackson Hole, trying to organize events there, was even though it's a quite a wealthy community, is discovering that uh, there are a lot of people with a lot of important things to do with not a great deal of time. And so knowing people and investing the time and getting to know people and make those connections personally probably is the most single most important piece of the puzzle. Um, and living 40 miles away on the other side of the Tetons from Jackson, I found it uh, uh, a particular challenge to try and organize things. The gratifying part, of course, is that the, the uh, handfuls of people that I was able to connect with were very supportive and very encouraging and very moved by what we're trying to do at TCEF. And so it was wonderful always to make those acquaintances. Yes, and that, that's always been, I've always been Roy, amazed at how, how few people knew about Tibet, but the ones that do know about Tibet, they have invariably been so supportive. So uh, what you said is true. But now, um, so here we are with TCF. We are about to celebrate 25 years um, very soon. Looking ahead, in the years ahead, uh, what would you like TCF to do more? In other words, what sort of like the legacy of TCF you'd like to see us hmm. Wow. Um, in challenging times like these, that's a fascinating question to respond to, because I think as a history buff all my life, <laughs> what I've come to realize actually fairly late in life is that the challenges never go away. They just change shape and character, but Oops. sometimes repeat themselves. Um, as I think it was Mark Twain is attributed as saying, history doesn't repeat itself, but it rhymes. Uh -huh. So I think as new challenges appear to arise, the difficulty that we have is keeping alive the torches that have been lit, but perhaps never completely carried to full success. Uh, the Tibetan cause is certainly one of those. And so if TCF could just keep on doing what it's doing, um, I would be delighted and tickled. I think that would be our greatest legacy. Right. And Roy, I think we already took some steps in that direction by adding some more Tibetan board of directors in the months and years ahead. Um, I think we'll continue to explore and see whether we can recruit some more direct Tibet, Tibetan supporters uh, to continue our work and to continue our legacy. But um, I, have, I did have one final question, and this is perhaps key for the Voices for Tibet. You know, in this program, Roy, as you know, I'm trying to get the voices of ordinary and some like you, not so ordinary, extraordinary Americans um, to speak up and um, say something in support of Tibet. Uh, so I guess my fundamental question is this, as an American who has been associated with the Tibetan Foundation over all these years, what is it that Americans, both at the political level and at the personal level, what can we do to continue our support for Tibet and also for the Tibetan cause? Hmm. Probably the most important thing is just to keep conscious of it and keep speaking about it to our elected representatives and with our dollars and cents to support those who are most in need as a result of being still refugees after, what is it? I, I've lost count of the years since, uh, since uh, you know, the, the Chinese invasion, 1959, whatever, the, whatever those numbers are. Um, the cause is still there, it's not going away. And in some respects, it may be getting more um, important as His Holiness uh, increases in years. So let's just keep the cause alive, keep talking about it, and keep contributing. And I'm so grateful to all those who have been doing so, and I fully hope will continue to do so. And Roy, I say, 
Trashi Dele and Amen to that. I'm so grateful that for Tibet, we have people like you here in Montana. I've just been blessed to meet many wonderful people with a heart for Tibet. Trashi Dele and gratitude always. Thank you. for Trashi Dele. Blessings to everybody. Thank you.